And then Verity steps in and he says, well, Iron Fist is a wrecker too and she's sticking up for him. But then he says, you know, I can talk for myself. You guys don't have to pretend that I'm not here. And so Verity says, well, then say whatever you need to say because it could be the last time you have a chance to say anything. And then we get to like one of my favorite parts of the whole comic. Um, Iron Fist kind of has this internal, I guess, dialogue, but it's his, he's thinking about what he's currently writing, which is his autobiography. And we get a lot of really cool backstory on Iron Fist, and he talks about like the first time he ever saw a Decepticon symbol, what it was like to kill his first person he ever killed, what it's like knowing that he's killed thousands of other people because of the guns and the weapons that he's made. It's really interesting. And also, you get to see him, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a mask there, so you get to see him without his faceplate. Kind of cool. At the end of it, he says, if I could do anything, I would live it all over again. And... Uh, of course, this is all just to himself, and to everyone else he just says, I am ready to die, and he accepts his fate as the one who needs to give his spark up to open up Aquatus. But as he's going to do it, Topspin says, that's enough, because he can see what poor Twin Twist is going through in the other room, which is awful, um, and he decides that he would rather both of them get put out of their misery instead of it having to be Iron Fist. So Topspin then donates his spark, and that is two more Autobots dead. So we're up to three characters who aren't going to make it to the end of the series. And then back in the spark extraction chamber, Stalker's like, well, what just happened? Because obviously uh, Twin Twist is dead now, so there's no reason to torture him. So then, of course, he turns around so he can torture either Impactor or Springer. So then we get inside of the Aquatus chamber, and we see that it's actually a bunch of surveillance cameras, and Perceptor can actually see what's going on in the other room, so he's like, what's going on down there? It's, they're torturing Impactor. And Iron Fist is like, whoa, look at all those Decepticons, I wonder where they are. And of course, they're right outside the door. And then Perceptor plugs Aquatus into Iron Fist's head and tells him that he is going to be downloading all of this information. And the poor thing, he's like, will it hurt? And Perceptor's like, yes, very much. And then we see Iron Fist getting all of this information, and yes, it does look very painful. And then we go back, and then we go back, and we see Stalker beginning his torture on Impactor, but in a very cool-looking panel, he is blasted away by Guzzle, who just looks awesome. Guzzle is awesome. Who is obviously with Cup and Snare, um, but then poor Snare gets shot in the head by Stalker, because obviously he thinks he's a traitor. And then, and I have to say, in the coolest panel, like in the whole issue, Springer takes that weird stick thing and he shoves it right into Stalker's face, which looks so cool. I have to say, the gore in this comic just looks so cool. Like, it's not a lot of gore, but when it is, it's very effective and it's awesome. Um, so I love that panel. And I have to say, I don't know if it's because red and green are complementary colors or whatever, but that is a very dynamically colored panel. I love that panel. I like want that panel like framed in my room, even though it'd be kind of creepy to have Springer stabbing somebody in the face framed in a room, but whatever. So obviously that kills Stalker. And then poor Snare, he's dying, but as he's dying, he explains what the, I guess, the choice is at the end of fighting all the pit battles that we had learned about earlier. And he says that it's either you commit suicide or you fight Overlord. So, and he says, you know, what's the difference? And then we find out what's kind of been hinted throughout the comic, that this entire thing on Garrus 9 is just to get Megatron to come and intervene so Overlord can fight Megatron himself, because it's all that he's wanted. And then Impactor decides they're going to go find Overlord and they're going to fight him, but they don't really have to go look for him because Stalker has radioed him right before he got stabbed in the head. And um, Impactor offers to take Snare somewhere safe, but Snare just says, no, you know, go ahead and kill me. He's going to kill me when he gets here anyway. And before he can even finish his sentence, Impactor's just like, okay, and he crushes his brain. I guess that was nice of him. And then there's another really awesome sound effect. This time it's Pakoom, which isn't as cool as Brackadoom, but it's, you know, it's Pakoom. Once again, really cool panel. I, uh, the colors and the silhouettes, really cool. And then Overlord bursts through the wall, and he's like, are you ready? And Springer's like, yeah, I'm ready. And then we go back to Iron Fist and the others, and Iron Fist has just finished getting all of this information downloaded into him, and he says that everything that he's been told is a lie. And Verity is freaking out because the Decepticons are like right there, 
but Perceptor has the idea to set off the deterrence chips using Equatus, um, which are in all of the ex-prisoners, which would be all of the Decepticons, and it would kill them all right away and they wouldn't have that problem to worry about anymore. But Impactor is also an ex-prisoner, so he would also die as well. And of course, Perceptor says they should do it to save themselves, and Pyro's like, no, because Impactor's a wrecker and he's awesome. Um, and so they leave the decision up to Iron Fist, and Viridi's like, are you kidding? Iron Fist is like Impactor's biggest fan. There's no way he's gonna tell you guys to kill him. But Iron Fist just says, everything's changed, Verity, everything. Knowing what I do now, I say, do it. And that is the end of the issue. And this issue is awesome. Like, the entire series is great, but I think that this issue is one of those ones that is just like, the epitome of why this storyline is so cool. Um, obviously we see the whole no one is sacred thing with Topspin and Twin Twist dying even though they're like more popular characters and they're the older guys. They're not just, it's not just the rookie who died anymore. Um, and then we have, you know, the grittiness of the gore and stuff like that. And then we have what I think was just some really cool backstory with Iron Fist and we got to see Iron Fist's like take on these old stories and we get to see Squadron X and I just think that this this issue is just really cool like just a really cool issue I love the coloring as always it's very dynamic along with the artwork I have to say like the artwork on the first page like you just open this comic and you know this is gonna be great because the art on the first page is just awesome um and also it's like after this you know something's going down in the fifth issue like this so pumps you up for the final issue. And it begs a lot of questions without being too annoying because sometimes cliffhangers annoy me. This is awesome. It just pumps me up for the next issue. So yeah, it's like, I don't know how much more I can really gush about this. It's great. Um, obviously, um, some of the characters are starting to change a little bit. We're learning some new stuff about people. We now know that Pyro is mean. Didn't like Pyro very much after this issue. Um, but yeah, I will stop gushing now. This is awesome, in case any of you didn't already know. So yeah, great issue. Cannot wait until issue five. I'm so excited to review it. Um, other than that, obviously I still have my Scorponok video. Is gonna come at some point. I don't know which is gonna be made first. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's basically it, and I will see you all next time. Bye!